Uh, good evening. This is Mr. Riley. I'm going to go ahead and do the lecture on for chapter one real quick. So I'm going to share application, application window, and share. Now you should be seeing chapter one slide deck there. I've already posted two and three, so I'm going to go ahead and put one up there for those who haven't done this yet. So chat, hacking the next generation. We're going to talk about the motivate, what motivates a hacker, the history of hacking, ethical hacking, and pen testing, and laws and ethical standards for pen testers and ethical hackers. So, what are the different profiles and motivates, and what motivates different types of hackers? We have good guy hackers, our infosec professionals, that's what you guys are studying to be, who use their hacking skills to expose vulnerabilities and make their systems more secure. What I would like to see you guys do is learn how to think like a bad guy so you can test your own systems and close up vulnerabilities. Then you have amateurs, our entry level hackers who use scripts and software from experienced hackers. They don't do the writing, they just grab them. They call them script kitties. Then you have criminals who are hackers who conduct illegal activities for financial gain, ransomware, um, stealing proprietary data from companies. And then you have ideological ones, our hackers who conduct hacking activities for political or ide ideological goals. Um, Greenpeace, actually, you probably, you know, you know, North Korea would probably call our cyber center or, you know, the NSA criminals for that. So the TAP principle of controls. Now, these are the different types of controls you have with your systems. You have technical controls, our software or hardware devices such as firewalls, biometrics, the stuff you're learning to set up. You have administrative ones so that are policies and procedures. Now, actually, you should have the policies and procedures in place before you can do the technical part because the, the policies and procedures set the roadmap on how you will set up the technical part. Then your physical one is also dictated by your policies and procedures. Will you have what type of doors, locks, we have guards, lighting, fences, you know, what kind of stuff will you have? We have guard dogs. Um, with a lot of hackers, they have this mindset it's a victimless crime. Like, I'm not actually stealing from this person. I'm stealing from the Internet, you know, or this company. Uh, Robin Hood Ideal, stealing software from the media from the rich companies like Microsoft and delivering them to the poor consumers via methods of bit torrents or, you know, from stealing from Sony and the other, you know, like movies and stuff like that. National pride and patriotism. That's the people you have like working at NSA and the cyber uh, protection brigade. Education value of hacking. Essentially it's okay to commit a crime as long as you're doing it to learn. You know, I'm just testing this out. What does it really work? And curiosity, you know, hey, I'm learning something kind of cool here, you know. Look what I can do. So what motivates a hacker? Well, you have to have three things for, for a motive. You have to have means. Does the attacker possess the ability to commit the crime in question? Motive. Does the hacker have a reason to engage in commission of this crime? And opportunity. Does the hacker have the necessary access to time and time to commit the crime? Now. With this, you can have the means and the opportunity, but no motive, and you're not committing any crime because you're not doing anything wrong. It's when you go ahead and basically commit the crime. What are some of the motivations? Beneficial, you know, money, beneficial contribution. Hackers are with motive. With this motive are not criminals, white hack hackers or ethical hackers are infosec professionals who engage in hacking activities to help make their organization systems more secure. Status, look what I can do. Like your, you know, one-upmanship with your friends. Look what I was able to do. You have the monetary gain where ransomware and stuff like that. Most today's malicious attacks are specifically targeted either to generate revenue for an attack or deny revenue to the target. Like if you do a denial of service attack. And the ideological and hacktivist is, it's for your goals, it's for your beliefs, and that's, you think it's right, you know, like Greenpeace taking down a website or something like that. The history of hacking, 
Um, it started in the 70s with the mainframes and moved on. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on this. Go ahead and read up on this if you'd like. Modern hacking and cyber criminals. New threats in the form of worm, spam, spyware, adware, rootkits, ransomware. Shift from the lone hacker to groups of hackers. They actually work in, in conjunction. And crime rings actually, you know, put these together, organize crime. A lot happened in the Eastern Europe. And nations with hostile interests use the Internet as an attack route, cyber attacks. Hackers receive financing from criminal organizations, terrorists, or even foreign governments. A lot of times, if a foreign government can't do an attack like the Sony attack the North Korea did, they will outsource it to places, you know, criminal activities that can. And they just pay them. Ethical hacking and penetration testing. Ethical hackers require permission to engage in pen testing. You make sure you have permission before you do this, because if not, you go to jail. You know, you have it in writing. You know, like say you run into somebody who owns a company and they say, oh, you know, if you can hack into my system, I'll pay you $10,000, you know. And you go ahead and do it and you go up to them and say, I've never had that conversation. Unless you have it in writing, it never happened, you know what I'm saying. Penetration testing is a structured and methodical means of investigating, uncovering, and attacking and reporting on target system strengths and vulnerabilities. Now, when you set up to do this, penetration tests are commonly called IT audits. But what, what this is, is you need to know what your boundaries are when you do a pen test and you do some ethical hacking. It could be physical. Can I get into the building? Can I get into these? And then there's different levels. Do I have any knowledge of the internal system or is it just blind hacking? If I know a little bit about it, then I can do. And the more complex it is, the more you're going to charge people to do this. And that's this kind of feeds right into this. Black box testing used to simulate how an attacker views a system. No knowledge of the system provided to the testing team. White box text, testing is advanced knowledge provided to the testing team where they may get like the IP schematics, what type of systems are using and stuff like that. So the role of the ethical hacker, use knowledge and skills, understand the mindset, hacker mindset, and simulate attacks, but do no harm and help provide better, you know, better security for them. Roles of ethical hacking requires permission of the victim, use the same strategies as a malicious hacker, use care to avoid harming the system, and you have to establish rules of engagement. How far am I going to go? Am I going to go into these files? Am I going to, you know, how, what do I want to, because if they say, oh, our whole system, that's going to be very cost prohibitive for them. And need advanced knowledge of the hacker's techniques. Ethical hacker and the CIA triad. So you have security, functionality, and ease of use. So you want to have security of your system. You want it to be functional. But you want it to be easy for the, your users to use because if you have security that way, they'll use it. If you make the security too complex, people will try to circumvent it. And then you have confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay, common hacking methodologies and hacking steps. These are your hacking steps. First, you do your reconnaissance. Then you, you know, like find out what company you're going to attack. See what they're about. Maybe look at their website. You start scanning that website. Start scanning their servers or firewalls. Infiltrate and escalation. You Once you find maybe a weakness, you infiltrate and try to escalate it. Exfiltration is where you try to maybe retrieve something from that. An attacker gains elevated or unrestricted access to an environment where they can access protected data, information, or resources. Access extent, access extension. Attacker installs additional exploits, root kits, and other tools so they can continue the attack in the future. Assault. The assault phase is like is not is not present in all types of attacks, but when present, this destructive phase is when the attacker causes damage. And obfuscation is when you basically hide your tracks. It's called covering your tracks. So, like you delete log files, you do, you know, it's kind of like slash and burn on your way out. Okay, 
performing a pen test, ethical hacking steps. First, you do your planning, find out, see if you discover anything. If you discover it, you tack and then you report. Or you may do additional discovery. And so this is kind of a loop here until you reach your goals. Performing a pen test continued. You have you can do a pen test on the technical part, the, the administrative part, or the physical part, or all three. It depends on your rules of engagement. Physical, where you may go in there and try and get into their physical location. See if you can get into their server room. Administrative, where you look over their policies and procedures and see if there's weaknesses in them. That's more of an IT audit. And the technical one is where you're basically probing them and see if you can get past their firewalls and stuff like that. Ethical hacking test steps, you do your pre-assessment, your assessment, and your post-assessment, and that is where you do your write-up. Now, there is a lot of writing to do with this because when you actually do a pen test, you're writing up reports and say you attack 15 machines, you got to report on all 15 of those machines. Now, there's software that helps you do that. Laws and ethical standards. Trust. A client places trust in an ethical hacker that they hire to use proper discretion when performing tests. If an ethical hacker breaks a trust and can degrade trust in other project aspects, such as report results of the test. So you don't want to lose trust because well, one of the bad things about being an ethical hacker, they tend, I can't use some of the previous companies I've hacked into as resume builders because they probably don't want you to talk about their their bad stuff, you know, their weaknesses. Legal implications. Violating limits defined by the permitted scope of the testing may be sufficient to cause a client to take legal action against the ethical hacker. If violating test scope results in damages, you're probably going to be liable for that. Client may be compelled to take legal action about that. Uh, examples of laws and ethical standards. You got the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, U.S. Electronic Communications Privacy Act, Sarbanes Oakley Act and Federal Information Security Modernization Act, which cover that. And I'm not going to get into that. So. And that covers Chapter 1. So I'm going to go ahead and post this in Week 1. You all have a good night.